Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, May 17th, and I'm here for my weekly cross-stitching update. I have a lot to share and update you on with all of my Mirabilia stitching and what I'm going to be doing this coming week, so stay tuned. First up, we have giveaways. I was giving away five different patterns last week, so, um, yes, one, two, three, four, five. So let's do that first. The first one I was giving away was a thrift store copy of Sleeping Beauty, which is out of print and very popular. <laughs> Quite a few of you wanted this. Um, this is courtesy of Donna, who who was who had found it and wanted to pass it along, and I figured uh, Mirabilia May was a good time to do, to do the giveaway. So I put it into the YouTube comment picker website, and there's 233 comments that had the word beauty in them. I said Sleeping Beauty and one person I think spelled sleeping wrong. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure everybody got a chance to win. So I'll do start. And Nancy Duckett. You won! I recently found your channel. I am in awe of all your beautiful stitching. Someday I hope to tackle a full coverage or a mirabilia like Sleeping Beauty. I would also love to stitch the cat flowers or Christmas. Enjoy your week upcoming weekend. So yay Nancy! So I'm glad <clears throat> you won and that you're excited to try a full coverage or a Sleeping Beauty because here's your chance. So I'll get that to me. I'll have my email up here. You can either email me um, stitchinmommy7 at gmail.com or you can go find me on Instagram and send me a private message. Get me your mailing address and I can get that out to you. So let's see, the next one was the quilt pattern, which was winter. So I'll change the word here, winter. And there were 78 comments with that word in it. And Robin T, I would love to stitch Sleeping Beauty, especially while curled up during the winter. <laughs> it was fun seeing everybody's um, unique phrases and trying to get all, you know, four or five different words in the same sentence or comment. It was really fun to see. So Robin, congratulations. You win the quilt pattern. Next, we had the Prim Stitch series number 10, Love and Friendship, which had the cat in it. So I used the word cat for that one. This one has 89 unique comments. So let's see who is going to get this one. Georgie McDougall, congratulations. The cat pattern is cute. Well, now you get to stitch it. <laughs> so Georgie, um, let me know your mailing address as well, and I'll get that in the mail to you. You can enjoy stitching on that. The next one we had was a flower, fresh cut flowers. And I think the word for this one was just flowers. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and just say flower, in case somebody forgot the S. And there's 75 unique comments for this one. Laundry stitcher, yay! I think you've won one, something before. I would like to stitch Sleeping Beauty on a winter day with my cat in a field of flowers. I would like to share a Christmas present. <laughs> All of them, that was fun. So you win the flowers. So. I could probably go find your uh, address. I think I have it in my email somewhere, but either way you can get that to me and I will get that in the mail. And then the last one was Peppermint Lane, which is the keyword I believe was Christmas. So this was fun. <laughs> it's nice to pass on the love of and make you guys happy with things that I know I probably won't stitch and you guys will. So. It's great. So 96 unique comments for Christmas. <laughs> Who's uh, in fancy pants? I can't wait for Christmas. I know it's only May, but I may have to start listening to some carols soon. Uh-oh. <laughs> You're welcome to listen to carols in May. Personally, I can't do it until after Thanksgiving, but I know there are other people who, who disagree. <laughs> you do you. <laughs> but... Who's that in Fancy Pants? You win Peppermint Lane. So congratulations, all five of you. I'm excited about that. 
So let get a hold of me, get me your mailing address, and I will get those in the mail likely next week. Or the, yeah, likely next week. So you have all week to get that to me. Um, so let's jump right into everything else I have to show you. I have a couple, a little bit of happy mail that I got from Cobweb Corner. I went ahead and I had seen uh, Colette, the highway stitcher, working on this, and she said that she had seen Shelly, key X stitch, working on this. I'm like, I know both of those ladies. <laughs> I want to stitch this too. And for some reason, this stuck out to me as something that would be fun to stitch. It's called Cross Stitch Fun by Kesslins. It's a monochrome piece, all one color. They do have an option back here of somebody that did it in multiple colors. So as of any of these types of designs, you could do it in multiple colors. But something about this struck me as being really fun. It's got a lot of more modern elements in it. There's a cat, um, there's some random, there's, you know, a fish, there's a treble clef, there's a sailboat. There's like a lot of random, like real interesting things in here. It's not super traditional, which is kind of fun. Um, I've never done anything that's all one color, but I thought this looks fun. And of course it's enormous. So it's probably also why <laughs> I was drawn to it but when I was looking on Cobweb Corner's website I was looking at their fabrics just to see what they had and I ran I discovered this uh, star sapphire jobelin it's 28 count I'll do it over one because it's gonna be smaller that way and this color reminded me of some Victoria model thread I had called coastal seaweed and I was right I think they're gonna look really well together. My only fear is maybe this is too too light and won't have quite enough contrast, but I think it's gonna be okay. This is like a mixture of uh, green and tan and gray. So um, I'm excited about that. It's not highly, it's not variegated enough that it's gonna be, I'll have to worry about which color comes next on my needle. I can just go to town and do whatever. Um, yeah, and I'm excited. And I'll probably use up pretty much the whole piece of the fat quarter with this one project, but that's okay. So I'm thinking, I think the plan right now is to start this um, on the 4th of June, just because. <laughs> I'm kind of feeling in a starting mood lately. Um, I'm feeling like starting all the things and finishing all the things, so you really can't do both, but I'm going to just roll with it. And if someone else has an excuse, gives me an excuse to start something, I'll probably do it. <laughs> Guess why not? So anyways, uh, Colette and I will probably start this on the 4th. Shelly, you're welcome to join in on, a, on that with us as well. And that'll be fun. So also while, while I was there, I decided to, I saw this and had to pick this up too. It's a um, Caribbean Sea Jobelin. It's a hand-eyed piece and it's got some modeling in it. It's really pretty. Here, I took it out of the pattern, uh, out of the uh, package for you. It's really pretty. Um, I don't want it to get washed out so I'll kind of hold it back but it's it's a nice piece. It would be good for pretty much anything. <laughs> you could do a mermaid on it. I'm not really a mermaid person as far as stitching. Um, I have one that one little girl mermaid um, full coverage piece but in general I'm not really a mermaid person. So, um, I haven't decided <laughs> what I will work stitch on that, but I could do something one over one or something two over two, but I thought that was really pretty. So I just had to, I had to get it. So that came last week. Super happy about that. And I also have a quick shop update that I had forgotten to mention last week. So I was working together with Colette, um, the highway stitcher here on FlossTube and Instagram, and she had a, a photo that she had taken that she wanted to put into cross stitch so that she can stitch it. And we, I got to thinking as I was working on it that this has wider appeal um, than just her because it's a fall scene and there's nothing expressly personal in it like people's faces or things so we talked together and we're doing a collaboration now 
that this will be available for everybody in my Etsy shop. She will also be stitching this. So if you're interested to see what this looks like stitched up, um, possibly later in May, but at some point in the near future, she's planning to start this. Um, so you can head over there and see her progress on this when it gets going. This is a full coverage piece. It's pretty large because we wanted to make sure to get the detail of all the leaves and the little waterfall streams coming down here. So it's um, 534 by 400, um, just to make sure. And it's max colors. So 230 colors so that it could be as rich and beautiful as possible. It is Pattern Keeper compatible. So you can find that in my Etsy shop if you are so inclined. And I'm hoping there's, there's possible new patterns for in the in the photo area coming in the next few months some of her some of colette's pictures might make it in there as well um in addition to this one and i might come up with some more of my own also and i also am toying with the idea of making some of my older full coverage patterns in a larger size so there's more detail available so if anybody's particularly interested in any of those being larger so that there's more detail let me know and i can work on that one first um, the other thing that I worked on this past week, oh, it looks like <laughs> it's before I fixed the ink in my printer, but, um, this is one of the designs I had with a collaboration with my niece and she did the artwork and I charted it into cross stitch. And I made this one, um, with a lot of backstitching and fractionals, which I know can turn some people off. Um, it's fairly small. It's 83 by 88. Um, and I thought, I've been toying with the idea of making some of these, the tea and coffee series um, and like some, a wreath series that I'm playing with that we would, I would maybe, maybe do them in all full, full crosses for, to see what the interest level is on one or the other. And so I toyed with that today or this week and I put up a full cross version of the same design. So it's very similar, but, um, only full crosses. This one is bigger in order to get the detail. So this is 169 by 177, um, but it has the same style or the same artwork done in all cross stitches. So there's that. And that's available in my shop now as well. So just, just kind of testing the waters. And I might do some more of them as well. Um, I know there were a few of you who are interested in teapots and teacups and things in that series. So would you be more interested in full cross versions or the smaller versions that have fractionals and backstitching? So let me know your thoughts on that. I would love to hear your feedback. So that is my brief shop update. And now we'll go on to my personal stitching. Um, I guess we do travel stitching first. This week, I was able to work on my typography. This is also one of my patterns that you can find in my shop, along with some other temperature pieces. So this is uh, May. May has lots of days in each letter, so I'm only able to do it every little bit. But I got the M done this week. I forget when, Tuesday maybe. <clears throat> and so it does have more variegation than you think in there. Um, this is on 28 count mystery even weave. It's like a ice blue one over one full crosses. And there's a nice, uh, quite a few different greens in there actually. Um, and actually two different yellows, but they're very similar <laughs> to each other. Um, it has cooled off since it hit the nineties over here. So we're not, we're back this last weekend actually. So in the, in the A you'll probably, we'll probably see some more blues because the, um, Maybe even, no, not purple. We'll see blues. Because it got down into the 60s as our high. Um, so still very <laughs> crazy weather. But that's okay. It makes it for, for some fun stitching. And a cooler spring is always welcome around here. So, because cool, cool to us is not cold. <laughs> it's just cool. It's not hot. And that's good. Usually by May, we're solidly in um 90s all the time you know 80s and 90s all the time so that's nice so we're not there yet we're only we only 
one dip into there for a couple days and then come back out. So I'll take that. The other thing I did for travel stitching was um, Prim Stitch Series number 11, Gratitude and Grace. And this one has pears and flowers and some quilt stars. So I am close to a finish on this one. And I've only been working on it for one week. So this is my start. I don't think I had anything done on this last time. So I started with the pairs, did those all full crosses because there really wasn't anything I felt like it needed. I did the quilt star up here. Then I came over and did these um, flowers. I decided to do eyelets in the center of the flowers because there's actually an um, even number of stitches in the center. A lot of times the centers have an odd number and since I'm stitching over one, I don't want to puncture the 25 count fabric. This is 25 count prim vintage cloth. And most of, if it's a cross stitch, it's one over one. And I did my stems and leaves, like I've been doing a lot of them where I have some, so my diagonal stitches for the leaves and regular cross stitches for the stems. So then I have the, um, like the cake stand right here, which I'm going to do in some specialty stitches. And the, I didn't, I had forgotten there is another star down here. So I still need to do that. I was thinking, oh yeah, I'll totally finish this today because the quilt stand or the cake stand, if it's all specialty stitches could go pretty fast, but I forgot about that. <laughs> so in the next day or two or three, I'll get this done. I'm pretty sure. So that'll be fun. I haven't hundred percent decided which types of stitches I'll be doing the cake stand in because it is an odd number. There's it's five across instead of like four. So some of the things I was thinking to do need to be symmetrical or so I don't know. I'm still playing around with what I'm going to do with uh with that. But definitely it it's not going to be very much cross stitch in there at all. So we shall see how that goes. And then when that's done, because I'm planning, I'm assuming I will probably finish that in the next day or two. Um, I'm planning to bust out my spring roundels for some travel stitching in the meantime. This was gifted to me by a friend and it's a full kit, so it comes with everything. I'm still debating whether or not I'll use these stretcher bars because usually I don't need to and nothing in here. These are actually almost all specialty stitches, um, but they're all specialty stitches that are within the square of a two over two cross stitch. So it, I don't think it'll warp the fabric that much, but I might try the first one on stretcher bars and just see what, see how I like it. Um, before uh, deciding to, to not do it that way. Um, and if I find I have trouble reaching with my fingers, um, I'll go ahead and just do the rest of them in the end. But I think I might start with the stretcher bars and see how it goes. Um, I'm, I don't know which one I'll start with, but maybe the rows. And I'll just go in, <laughs> left or right. I'm not sure. So that'll be fun. I'll probably start this this week. And, um, yeah, and I guess my, my iris is another thing that's a regular ongoing thing. I was trying to think what else I had to show you. Yeah, so. I'm excited about that. Oh yeah, I think I was planning to say more generic travel stitching content. Um, Oh yeah, and I have my Mill Hill kit to talk about too. That, but that was the other thing. I knew I was forgetting a couple things. So with my travel stitching, I am planning to work on my Cozy Cafe Club as travel stitching once it comes out on the 25th. So in between the end of the Prim Stitch series number 11 finish, um, because I don't have number 12 yet, um, I'll work on this until this comes out. And hopefully, and then at some point I'll work on number 12 of the Prim Stitch series. Hopefully I'll be able to get this done. So I'm gonna kind of shuffle around between different projects in the car to try to work on all of them a little bit. So it's kind of my plan. Play it by ear, see how it goes. Um, my Mill Hill prog progress on Monday and a little bit on Tuesday um, went pretty well. <laughs> this is Winged Monarch by Buttons and Beads or by Mill Hill, it's a buttons and beads kit. These are all like six inches square, I think. Um, 
I'm planning to do a bunch of these. They won't, will not all be butterflies, but they, I'm going to do different ones for different months. And I would like to finish this in May because this one's planning to be the one I'm going to put up in May. So it would be really cool. But at this point, if I only stick with it on Mill Hill Mondays for a few links of thread on that Monday, it's not getting it done in May because this is taking a lot longer than I expected to do the beading. Here it is now. This is on call for everything that came in the kit. You, you can see those, the ones in the body shimmering. It's fun. So I finished the ones around the edge of the, the wings. Those are black petite beads. So it's, they're kind of hard to tell because they're not quite as shiny. And then I did these dark, they're called rainbow, but they're more like a dark iridescent color. And they do have some shine. Yay, that's fun. So I wanted to get the body done really bad. So I, I finished the wing and I had a little bit of time left, but not much. And so I started in, on the wing, on the body, but I kind of, I just ran out of stitching time basically. So I ended up not working on Garden Prelude at all last Monday. And I worked on getting the body and I actually did a little bit of the body Tuesday as well, just to get that done because I didn't want to stop in the middle of a color. That's the only place where that bead color goes and I didn't want to leave it in the middle. There's not that many in that color. So um, so far I'm doing it as charted. The black beads used a black two-stranded half stitch or two-stranded full cross. These used a dark gray two-stranded full cross. They are also petite beads. Most of the beads on here are petite. Um, the half the big beads will use a half stitch, but I haven't gotten to any of those yet. Um, trying to think what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, I'm. They 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 have a tip in there, in the instructions that if you are having trouble getting two strands through the eye of the beading needle, which is very tiny, the tight the uh, beading needle's eyes are generally very small. Um, if you're having trouble getting your thread through it, to do two strands, put one strand through it. And then you'll have basically a loop that goes through your needle. And the, the, the end of the, the two ends will be at one end and your needle will be at the other end. And it'll be one big loop. Then you get two strands, um, but you only have one going through your needle. And that works really well. And it actually, once you've anchored it, I usually go in the back, I'll go one direction and then back again. So it's kind of, it kind of anchors it underneath my previous stitches. And then I start beading. You don't have to worry about the thread falling off your needle either because it's just looped through your needle. So um, that's kind of how I've been doing it. And I will hopefully do a little bit more on that today. But my plan for this one is when Quick Stitch Iris is finished, which I'm going to show you now, turned right to it. When this one is finished, which should happen in another week, maybe. <laughs> When this one is done, um, I'm gonna focus my like bonus stitching time every day to that Mill Hill kit to see if I can maybe eke out a finish in the month of May. Um, Cause just doing it on bonus stitching on Mondays is not gonna be enough time. So we'll see if, and then I will start in on Waterfall in Yosemite for my bonus stitching to finish out the 21,000 stitches in 2021 challenge in Full Coverage Fanatics. I'll start that up in June and I'll see if I can get this mill hill kit done here in the month of May. So that's my plan. So this is Quick Stitch Iris now compared to last week. And this is 25 count, one over one, full crosses. And I'm really, really having fun with this. It is nice to pull it out and stitch on it and know that I'm gonna get it done whether or not I go crazy on it and work on it all the time, I know it's going to get done in the next week or two. So I'm not stressing about it, I guess. And knowing that I have all my Mirabilia plans, it's been fun to just work on it and know it's know the finish is coming. Um, but I'm I don't need to put a, put aside all my other projects in order to get it done because I know I know it's coming. I know it's on the horizon. So there's just a few more holes there on the bottom. So likely one more, like a week, week and a half, something like that, um, I should be able to get that done. So we shall see. That'll be super exciting. And then it will be 
ready to frame and gift to my aunt before um, her birthday later in the year. So that's exciting. Let's see, I think that's all the kind of random stuff I had. So we can go into Mirabilia stitching, which is exciting. Yeah, I think so. All right, so I talked about get all my mirrors up here. I worked on Garden Prelude first this week and that was supposed to start, my rotation was supposed to start on Monday and I didn't actually work on it at all on Monday because of focusing on my butterfly. <laughs> so I only worked on this Tuesday and Wednesday but I did get a tiny bit more, put in one more string later when I was talking to Colette online and so I got one more string done beyond the two days that I'd given it and I worked in the archways. I didn't end up doing any on her, which was a little bit sad, but I'm very happy with what I got on the archways. They're, they've made great progress and I'm, I'm happy to see that get so close to being done and then I can focus all on the fun stuff later. So this is on 32 count Lugana in Wedgwood by Coloring Cotton. And maybe I'll put it up here. So this is two over two, all of it is two over two, and um, it's like a nice gray blue. It's it's uh yeah that's closer back there to a nice. So I worked on the archways. I got the lighter brown done in all of the archways uh, and the pillars. So that's all of that lighter brown color there is, and then I went back through and did a little bit more of the dark brown. You can see that it's 3371. It goes all the way to here now and kind of dips down. Some of it, I had one length of it already in the middle arch and then it comes around here and goes to there. So I need to finish that in the top of the arches and then there's more in the pillars as well, as well as a couple other colors in the two middle pillars, these two. And then all of that upper background will be done. So then I'll just have the lady and the flowers and things to do, so which is a lot, that's most of the stitching, but <laughs> it was really nice. I think it went faster than I expected to do those archways. So that's that was fun. So even though I didn't get quite as much time on it as I had planned, it's still, I'm still happy with my progress. And I think in general, I've been happy with all of my Mirabilia progress this, this month. Um, about three days is a nice length of time for me. The only downside is by then I've, started to sink my teeth into it and I don't want to stop <laughs> but knowing I have another gorgeous one to work on is incentive to be like okay get to a good stopping point and just it's more exciting to come back to it knowing you're really enjoying it so that's kind of how I look at it so the next one I worked on was Lady of the Flag and I worked on this for three days as well and then again yesterday I finished out a string just because I didn't want to leave a string dangling on either of these so I wanted I was actually toying with doing even more on this one than finishing out the string I was thinking of putting in one more length of a different color and I decided not to I said no I need to actually get a start on Roses of Province which is supposed to start yesterday so I was a good girl and I got and I stopped <laughs> but this was fun so this is on 32 count Stony Point linen, which is um, stiff and see-through, but I actually feel like I can stitch a little bit faster on this kind of fabric because it's so stiff and see-through. I don't have to worry about my tension as much. It's a nice gray-green color. I think she's going to really pop on this. And I realized the first day I worked on this um, band right here, which I wasn't sure what it was at first, but it, that's like the, um, the edge of the flag that you would put like the grommets in to hold it onto the flagpole. So I worked on that the first day and a little bit in the blue. Um, and then, then I realized I have never I had never stitched these on the outside. So I put those in the next day and kept working on, on the flag and did more blue and on the next couple days. So mostly blue, but I also did some beading, which is always fun. So yay. So that's where she's at now. I will 
like I would like to bring her back out in July for 4th of July and September 11th um, because that's the she was actually a memorial for September 11th um, so that would be nice to pull her out at least for those two times so I got to remember that um, then yesterday I started my rotation on Roses of Province barely didn't get very much done on her at all but it's worth showing <laughs> I suppose because I will be working on her again for another two days here so it's worth the before and after this is Stonehenge 32 count um, Lugana by color not Lugana this is linen this is Belfast linen 32 count um, by color and cotton and it's greens and purples it's really pretty to work on there we go that's a good angle <laughs> to get what she i just did one like one and a tiny bit in her, of lengths of thread in her hair her the topiary is going to be fun i think but i i feel like i need to get her looking a little bit more put together before i can move on so i'll work on her hair and the bows in her hair the next couple days it's going to be a busy week so I don't know how much I'll get done on any of these this week, but I'm going to try. That's all, all we can do, right? So we'll give her another couple days to work on her hair and see what, see what she'll look like after that. But yeah, I really do enjoy this fabric. It's richer in person than it ever shows up in the camera, but... So then we get to move on to my next project that's alphabetical and that's Stargazer. Yay! <laughs> Fan favorite, I believe, um, because of the stunning fabric that I managed somehow to dye for this. The one and only piece of fabric I've ever dyed. <laughs> but I really liked how it turned out. I finally got all the stars finished, so now I can focus on her. I have her done about to there. A little bit more on her arms but so I need to do all of her dress which is quite a bit of stitching but I think if I were going to focus on any of these to get a finish next not likely this calendar year but next I believe she's probably the closest to a finish we'll see we'll see how much I can get done this rotation and that will kind of maybe determine a little bit more as well but so here she's at I dyed double dyed I dyed this myself with a double dose of denim writ if you're interested in trying something like that yourself so here is my starting point on her she's really pretty i'm doing a com color conversion for all of her um clothes and hair as well because i want her to look a little bit more like me and stand out more on this dark fabric the color she's originally charted in might have faded in especially her dark jacket would have faded into the fabric so super happy with how she's looking and i'll be able to start i'll fill in her arm and then keep working down into her dress so it's gonna be fun so i'll give her three days and i'm excited about that this was originally this is 32 count linen but it's originally um mcg textiles that i dyed and it's still even you know not every mcg textiles linen is uneven or fabric I've actually measured them often in the store before I buy them to see how uneven they are. <laughs> and they're not selling fabrics anymore, so it's not really even a point. But if you find some in the thrift store or something, um, or on eBay or whatever, you know, it's still, some of it is okay. All of my Mirabilia Seasonal Queens are done on MCG Textiles Linen as well, and I'm happy with them. Um, and yeah, just measure it first and see if you're happy with it or not and it's soft it's nice linen um as far as that's concerned I've, I've found the worst offender as far as being uneven is the antique white even weave so if you find antique white even weave by mcg textiles in some location definitely check that first before you use it because it could mess things up and make it skewed i used that for one of my frosted pumpkin national parks pieces and it worked because it wasn't particularly like necessary to be perfectly square 
but everybody's just a little taller and skinnier than they were originally charted to be. So just be aware of that if you're using the antique white even weave, 28 count even weave. So my next one um, alphabetically, which I will start on Saturday, so do this one Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday. So I'll probably film in between the rotation on this one. This is Summer Queen. And this is the Mirabilia that I have the least amount of progress done on. So my hope, I'm still kind of in here in the middle somewhere. So my hope is to keep working my way up and get to her face. Because I like to start to work from the top down, especially on these ladies, the queens especially. Um, once you've got their head done, there's nothing else above it. Like some of the other patterns have things above the head. But these, you go straight up, do the head, and then you can just work right down. So that's my plan to work towards her head. And this is, again, like I said, this is 28 count, I'm not 28, 32 count linen by MCG Textiles in Oyster, which is mostly white, but just, just a hint of not white. So there's my very pathetic start. I think it's one or two days. I think I started it last year on the first day of summer or thereabouts. I don't even remember now. Um, so... That's where I'm starting from, and hopefully you, it will be a lot <laughs> farther along when you see it next. Don't even know what that, that is. Like, to uh, to tell you, um, obviously there's some skin in there. I think that may, be, that may be her hand right there, and some of her dress, obviously. So, But it'll be nice to uh, get that looking more like a person. So that's my plan going forward. This week and again it will be a busy week so I'll do what I can um, hopefully I can make some nice progress on everything and have lots of pretty stuff to show you next time so and I had two more people who told me that they are also working on Mirabilia's in the month of May and they have YouTube channels one is Nana Sue stitches and the other one is city stitcher so go take them give them a look-see and See what they're working on to enjoy all these lovely mirabilias if you're interested in more youtube channels and instagram channels that are doing mostly mirabilias or kind of a focus on mirabilias in the month of may i listed a whole bunch of them last week so go to last week's video and, and towards the end there's a whole i wrote them all in the screen um all the fun channels that are and accounts that are doing that so that's really fun i am excited to keep working on Mirabilia's because I want to make sure I put some love into all the ones that I've already started. But I am also excited to get back to some of my other projects. So that'll be fun to do in June and July, which is coming up really fast. I know, but it feels like it's kind of far away already. Um, still, Full Coverage Fanatics is doing an Olympics challenge in the month of July. I don't know any details yet. They haven't released the details, but that month will probably be um, a heavy fo heavy focus on full coverage. So that'll be kind of fun to get back to some of those that haven't seen any love for a few months. So anyways, with that, I will sign off and wish you a wonderful week and happy stitching. Bye.